Um, and we're going to talk about him a little bit more here shortly. But uh, let's bring up Dr. Kyle Trimble now, uh, one of the fans of the show. Kyle, thanks for coming on. I mean, hey, you're the star of the show. We just talked about preseason <laughs> game three with a Panthers guest. And now we get to talk about probably what people care about a little bit more. Uh, and I'm sure you're doing your rounds right now on everybody's network. But appreciate having you on, Kyle. Absolutely. Yeah, great to talk to you guys. Yeah, so we got some positive reactions out of camp, at least from what I would appear to be positive on a few players. Um, start at the top at the quarterback position um, with Mitchell Trubisky and with that big bulky knee brace he had on. Uh, that didn't look very good. What's What are you thinking right now when it comes to Mitchell Trubisky and uh, what the Bills need to do there? Uh, Trubisky, he's going to be out for a while. Um, I know that when he was running in the second quarter, he got taken down. The injury didn't look all that major. Like I thought it was a mild MCL yeah. sprain, just the way they, the leg was hit from the outside and the way it went down. And then he continued to play another few um, plays on it before he got pulled for Ben DiNucci. You didn't think much of it. You're like, okay, DiNucci wants to get in and get some playing time. And then you hear week to week, and then you start seeing the, the sleeve and everything else with that and realize that it's probably more significant than that. So yeah, he's probably looking at at least a grade two, potentially even a grade three MCL sprain. We're talking weeks, if not months, to, to return there. Uh, you know, if it's a grade two, you're looking at six weeks. If you're grade three, you're looking at, you know, two months, maybe even a little bit longer than that. So I can see him being a short-term IR candidate and then coming back maybe midway through the season. It just, it's unfortunate, but if you saw him watching practice today, uh, walking around, he did not have any flexion in the knee. It was stiff. You could just tell he just does not want to be out there and it just hurts like no other, but you know, it just says that's the reality of the football, um, you know, playing football and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. And we don't want to get just your injury takes. So what, what happens? What do the bills do now? Like what should they do at QB two? I mean, that seems long enough to where it doesn't seem like, I know a lot of people are interested to see Brown, um, but it doesn't seem like that's the solution. So knowing what you know about just the injury and the player in general, like, what are you thinking the bills need to do at that QB two spot? You, you hate giving up some type of draft assets or, or, you know, developmental players, but you might need to get somebody who has some, ha, have done something in the league here. I was trying to think of a better word to that than that, but there there's not at, at this time. Um, they just need to find somebody who has proven themselves. I've seen some different players out there. You know, none are great. The one that thing comes to mind is maybe you know, CJ Beathard. You know, he's done some things in the league. I've seen Tyler, Taylor Heineke. I think you need to bring somebody who has at least started games, has at least can manage the the system for the time being, and has worked in different systems there too. Um, it's not ideal situation, and you might need to give up something for some of these guys. But it's better than I think what we have right now. Danucci's fine, you know. Brown he he can learn, but there's a reason why these guys are not in the league or they're playing in the XFL. I mean, they're they're NFL players, but they're fringe NFL players. Yeah, for sure, Kyle. So. Before we had Jared on, Kevin and I were talking about this backup quarterback situation, and I showed him this list here. Jody Biasi tweeted it today, and we were going through some of these names here, and you mentioned some of them. And the two that we kind of settled on were Tyler Huntley and Taylor Heineke, but then we were saying that maybe the Falcons don't want to give them up just because Kirk Cousins is coming off his injury and Michael Penix is a rookie. But do any of those names intrigue you? Because – I agree. I mean, the Bills have an extra six-round pick from the Boogie Basham trade last year. And if Trubisky's going to be out, I mean, like, is it almost a definite in your mind that he's done for week one and probably weeks two, um, three, and four? The, the definite is is pretty – oh, yeah, he's definitely done for week one. There's there's just the way he's walking around and just what they're saying week to week. I really don't see them getting him back out there. Even with a brace, he's not going to have any mobility. Um, I think the only reason he's able to play at all is because uh, – Swelling hadn't quite set in. I'm sure he felt the pain and felt the instability in the knee, but I'm sure once that swelling set in, it was like, hey, this isn't going to happen. So, yeah, they need to find somebody else. Find somebody else. I mean, hope that, you know, break glass in case of emergency. But if we walk in with Ben DiNucci and Anthony Brown, I'm scared. So do any of those names intrigue you? Because I think that the Bills need to go after a dual threat quarterback, someone who can kind of emulate what Josh Allen does. And like I told Kevin, there's only one Josh Allen. But I think Tyler Huntley could be interesting because he is the third, if not fourth string quarterback right now in Cleveland. So you might be able to get him pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And we were saying before that maybe you just wait until a week from now from cut down day. But if you want to jump ahead and get ahead of the curve here and get one of these quarterbacks in the room now, 
with the thought of either A, playing in the game on Saturday, and then B, just getting him up to speed as quickly as possible because September 8th is getting here rather quickly. Uh, you know, maybe they do want to shed one of those draft picks because it really might be worth it. Um, look at those names. I mean, some of the names intrigue me, you know, your Trey Lance, you know, Zach Wilson, the names itself intrigue you, but I mean, the product on the field does not. So yeah, maybe you do have to trade for the Cleveland quarterback and see what you have. I mean, that guy's at least been healthy and, and, you know, has proven to, to play all right when it's called upon the other guys have not proven what they can do on the field there. So some of the names, if you just look at the name alone, intrigue you, but I'm not crazy about any of the names right now based off the production they've they've given. Yeah, I feel you. I'm kind of with you. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> we'll see uh, as this kind of all unfolds and if they use that uh, short-term IR spot with Trubisky, which seems likely uh, 